This is the last photo we took in 2019 with the caption, Treat us well 2020. Then, a few months later, the world was thrown into disarray because of the COVID-19 pandemic. For educators like myself, it feels like there's a sudden disruption in education. Students and teachers were forced to stay home. Schools scrambled to put education online. From that experience, it seemed like a new world order has taken over. Conversations sprouted all around on whether online learning can replace teachers. Different stakeholders seem to have their own personal thoughts and even agenda in these subjects. As an educator myself, I have my take on this. I challenge and disagree with that statement and claim that online learning cannot replace teachers. But first, I would like to say I get it. I look at my seven-year-old son learning and progressing in coding over the span of one and a half COVID years. I was really in a camp of online learning can replace teachers eventually. I mean, online learning can be and often is more visually exciting. It can be gamified to make learning more interesting. It is scalable and increases productivity. It can be accessed anywhere, anytime, by anyone. But as I dug deeper, I started to realize some fallacies in my own argument. When I started to unpack the phrase, replacing teachers, what do we actually mean by that? What are we replacing teachers from? To really look into this, we need to explore the role of a teacher. Is a teacher's role simply just a deliverer of content or there is more to it? If we consider the role of a teacher with the direct benefactor being the student, then the role of a teacher could be that a teacher is an experienced designer. A teacher is also a facilitator of learning and ultimately a teacher will be responsible for progressing their students' knowledge and raising their learning order and improving their metacognition. Besides having some clear advantages of being a better deliverer of content, online learning does little to address the other roles of a teacher. Education is an ever-changing process as it is reacting to the changing needs of students, society, and stakeholders. That makes the curriculum design and content selection an ever-evolving creative process, which requires a teacher's involvement constantly. Moreover, knowledge acquisition is simply the beginning of the learning process. Using Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives, acquisition can only account for the two lower level cognitive skills, which are knowledge and comprehension. For example, it is hard to imagine if a student reads about sketching for animation and is able to draw good animation immediately. Learning needs to go through the other cognitive stages. Therefore, a teacher as a facilitator of learning needs to ensure that students' cognitive skills move beyond knowledge acquisition and into construction and collectively built and refined upon so that students can apply analyze, synthesize, and evaluate. But don't get me wrong, I am not against online learning, nor am I advising that online learning is inferior in any way. On the contrary, I am for online education and wish we can use it more to bridge the gaps we were unable to do before. But it does challenge us to rethink our roles as teachers because online learning democratizes knowledge and our students who are citizens of the digital age are coming to class far more differentiated in prior knowledge and abilities than before. Hence, although my stand is that online learning cannot replace teachers, I do not believe that that is the conclusion to the conversation, but rather this is the title that begins our conversation into the next chapter. That is a quote that I really like. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men to gather wood, divide the work and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. Maybe as we rethink our roles as teachers and as online learning displaces some parts of our teaching, we can finally amplify our core responsibility to our students, which is to inspire them.